Well, Qantas shares continue to soar as the stock price heading for a crash landing. Hello, I'm Kyle Rodder, and in this week's Investor Spotlight, we take a dive into the current drivers of Qantas's earnings growth and how things shape up for the FY23 results and the future. And of course, to help me run through this, Danny Akuye, my colleague at Ausbiz, joins me at the desk. Danny, great to see you. Of course, Qantas, uh, well, perhaps controversial uh, when it comes to investing, maybe contentious, but um, let's talk about the results coming up. Is this pot- potentially the calm before the turbulence? Uh, it's really interesting because the analysts are really upbeat, but there are voices of dissension out in the market. And the key question is, is there've been an amazing post lockdown recovery story and the whole aspect of how much YOLO travel is going to continue and how much they will be able to milk this recovery is really in question. Um, Alan Joyce is leaving at a very opportune time Mm -hmm. because he's taken a lot of costs out of the business and uh, the, the problem going forward is even if they do have a good result here is they need to replace over 300 aircraft at a huge cost. So it is currently in a trajectory of uh, a company that has massive capital expenditure going forward at a time potentially when earnings uh, or economic growth could slow. Indeed, so that's its cost out program that you're talking about there. So tell us a little bit more about that and what it could potentially mean. So the company has basically taken a billion dollars worth of costs out of the business and anyone that's flown Qantas may have noticed a decline in service. There's been a lot of criticism about the quality of food, about lost luggage, etc. But the point of that is you take all these costs out and they've substantially cut um, the workforce that all the benefits drop straight to the bottom line giving earnings about a 50% boost. So just to let people know currently forecasts have uh, EPS growth for Qantas returning to levels that were seen in around 2021. Interesting. Okay, so uh, let's preview those earnings uh, a little bit more and just in terms of what we should expect there. What, What are going to be the drivers for the future do you think? Well, they're very much staking their drivers on what's called Project Sunrise, which is getting long haul flights across to London and the US. And to do this, they need to re-equip the fleet. So they will be buying a whole lot of new A350 Airbuses. And what they've decided to do, this is a program that Alan Joyce put in place and then COVID effectively disrupted it. But the idea is is that you upgrade the amount of premium seats from 30% currently up to 40% because you can, they, they feel when they've tested the market from the uh, Perth to London uh, current flights that a lot of premium customers will pay to have a shorter flight. So that is their strategic view. But the long and the short of it is they need to re-equip the fleet, which will bring the average age of the fleet from 16 Point four years down to 9.9 years, but it could cost um, increased capital expenditure from around 7 billion up to 15 billion. Here I was thinking Project Sunrise was that east facing penthouse on the harbour that Alan Joyce had purchased for himself. <laughs> but um, <laughs> let's take a look at just the earnings preview and analyst outlook here. Um, what have we got in terms yeah, of the indeed. broker calls? Indeed. Okay, well, look, guidance earnings that the company has given is 2.425 billion to 2.475 billion. And uh, just to let you know, their loyalty programs are doing mm-hmm. super well. 425 million to 450, although there was a class action that came out yesterday against the company for them not paying, um, basically uh, re- giving returns on flights that hadn't been met. So in terms of share price targets, so Refinitiv has $825 um, dollars target per price per share. Interesting, two strong buy ratings, 12 buy ratings, two holds, no sales. FN Arena, which is a slightly smaller universe, has a share price target of $7.60. So there's quite some disparity there in terms of forecasts. Uh, but the analysts are really, really bullish on this one. And uh, I must admit, uh, I thought it was quite interesting that Angus Aitken, he is a bit of a controversial stockbroker, but he clearly had a little bit of a conniption flying Qantas recently and felt mm. services uh, suffered dramatically. And uh, he just feels this, this recovery 
is it's it's a cyclical business. Qantas is cyclical. It's not going to defy this cycle. It's just a matter of when. Yeah, we've all got our Qantas war stories from the last couple of years, but we'll see if investors uh, well can be rewarded once again for their patience. Uh, Danny Akuye, thank you so much for getting us. Pleasure, across. Kyle. Okay, well, that does it for this edition of Investor Spotlight. Join in next week where we'll put another investment theme under the spotlight.